Time to shine today, Podcast Varsity Squad. This is Scott Ferguson, and I have my really awesome sauce friend, my Trinidadian, Miss Natalie Jobity. And she is the, the architect of the unveiled way. And as a brilliance unveiler, Natalie Jobity leverages more than a decade of experience empowering hundreds of women as an image consultant and now as a leadership coach and personal brand strategist of the unveiled way. She works with trailblazing women to empower them to unveil their brilliance and maximize their impact. And Nellie, thank you so much for coming on. Please introduce yourself to Time to Shine Today Podcast Varsity Squad. But first, what's your favorite color and why? Oh, God, that's you asked me the tough because I love color, as you can tell from my background. I can tell, I, love. Yeah. I would say it, but it's leaning more towards the magenta lately. Magenta. Yeah. Love it. You're the first guest of over 450. That has said magenta. So you are a unique lady. I love it. I love it. And so Natalie, let's, um, I, I know that um, you're out there really helping the women level up in this world. Thank you so, yeah. so much for doing that. But I'd love to get to your roots. I'd love to get to where you kind of started and got to the point where you're so immensely respected by people that they're yeah. seeking you out for that help to level up. You know, it's, so it's in, my journey has been interesting um, as, as, as most of our journeys. Um, so, of course, I was born in Trinidad, uh, born and raised, came here to go to college, went to Rutgers University. Oh, wow. um, I think it was me coming to this country was, was the first thing that had me look at myself a little differently because in Trinidad, being a six feet tall, very at, at 11 years old, I was wow. like almost like a, like a, like a, people would stare at me. I was like a thing. And, you know, it was very hard to, to grow up like that. But then coming to this country, it was like, are you a model, you know, and all those questions are like, oh, oh, am I actually pretty or whatever? So it kind of boosted my self-esteem being in being here. And then long story short, graduated, a very smart girl, went to Cambridge University, did, did all the things. And then finally, in London, oh. correct, yeah, that was a whole, that was like the best year of my life still, still. And that was so many, so many years ago. Um, but um, landed in a career in market research, which is interesting because it wasn't where I would have thought I would have been, but it's what I... I'm so gifted in many things. One of them is connecting things, understanding uh, numbers, but, but but stories. And so I was really good at telling the stories and the data for the clients, did it for 15 years, but I always knew that that was not my thing. And I kept trying to seek like, what am I really here supposed to do? And I really was, I'm somebody who needs to be on purpose. And so I was always looking. Finally, I stumbled on this career called image consulting. And when I heard about it, it was just like everything that up in me. I was just like, oh my God, I can get paid to help people look good. And I was just like, oh, went all the way in, resigned from my very lucrative career at the time, jumped ship to be an entrepreneur full time. Um, it was crazy looking back at it because as a woman of color, like all of the things I did was very crazy, but it just made sense at the time. And that building that business from scratch, learning the, learning the, the lay of the land in that, being so good at it, working with hundreds of women, Scott, that is where my passion got really ignited of this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to empower women, especially men too. I would say a few good men because they are there. <laughs> I love it. I was going to say, don't leave us out, Natalie. No, 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 because you all are, oh, there are a few good men who are meant to, to help too. But even back then I did, but women, for some reason, women were my focal point. They were my passion. And I saw how we, we, I say we because I was it was me too. We we lack confidence. We doubt ourselves. We don't do the things. And just even as an image consultant, I would go a little bit deeper than, of course, the external. So that was where that I didn't know it at the time. I thought it was going to be the thing, but I was like, hmm, I want to go deeper. What does she really want to be? What does she want to project? All this different stuff. Mm. Did that career? Did that career for for a minute until it 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 was a God story where I had to end it. And I'm just I'll just say that to, for, for for time's sake. Yeah. Had to end it. And then it was like, what am I supposed to do now? Oh, that was supposed to be my life, you know, whatever work. And God, again, gave me this business name for the Unveil Way and started me Love on it. this coaching journey where I got certified. I didn't even, I used to hate the idea of coaching because I, a long story. Me too. <laughs> and I never thought I would have been a coach. I kept thinking, God, a coaching? I kept saying, why are you leading me here? But I was like, I'm very obedient now. So follow the promptings. And I realized, oh my God, I would love this. And so I got into this, this now business. It didn't start as leadership coaching, but it is, it evolved into this because again, God showed me that I have always been a leader and I'm meant to help other leaders, Beautiful. So especially good. women who don't even see themselves as leaders, but are to unveil their brilliance so that they can step into their power, their influence and make the impact that they are divinely designed to do. That is my heartbeat. 
that is everything for me. So that is where the passion comes from. That is that that's that that's just beautiful. And, and you use so many words like brilliant, brilliance and design. And, and, and that's who God is. And and again, not everybody out there believes in our God, which which is fine. You know, they have a creator, but like so many people want to stay away from that goodness because I mean God is love, God is money, God is it, all those things is why wouldn't you want to stay close to that source? The God is wisdom of good, right? Yes, Love yes. it. So, so do you take clients more one-on-one or are you in a group setting, Natalie? So I'm, 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 I love my one-on-one. I'm, I'm an introvert, but I'm also but who presents as an extra because nobody ever believes I'm an introvert. Me too, um, love. Me too. Okay. Okay. I would. Okay. So we're saying, yeah. I never think you are. Like I will go to a coffee shop by myself and sit there for hours reading my Kindle or, and have no problem. Go out to eat by myself. I have no problem right, with that. Right, right. So, yeah. so, 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 but, but, but I really thrive in that one-on-one small group connection thing. That's where nice. I shine. Yeah. And I am realizing because, of course, we want to scale to scale our businesses. I'm, I'm, I'm doing more groups. I'm doing some virtual groups, and I'm beginning to learn some different things coming up later this year, like masterminds and things. Nice. I am also, I have also seen, and this is, I'm, all, I'm, I'm being very much like, where do you want me? Um, and I see that I'm a really, I create really authentic safe spaces mm. and whether it's one-on-one or whether it's a small group environment i that's one of my superpowers so i'm i'm leveraging that more and more nowadays i love that so if you're in like a, maybe a one-to-one with somebody and they're seeing if you're the right fit i call it the right horse for the course with my coaching right <laughs> so you're finding out if you're the right fit it, is there any secret sauce if you don't mind sharing that maybe helps them kind of locate and zone in on that that, that blind spot that's holding them back? Mm. Well, I just had one of those calls yesterday. Uh, no, no, it was Monday. And then we had a follow-up yesterday. It's interesting. Someone's like, someone's just echoing back the words, words somebody say that you know is potent, but they didn't even know it's potent. So this is what this person said to me in the call on Monday. They used the word, I want to find my new fire. They don't even know they said that word. And I said, so later on I said, you said you wanted to find your new fire. Where is it? Where, where has, have you? And then she was like, well, I used to have it, but now I don't know where it's gone. And maybe because I'm, it's, I'm old. I'm like, nope, it's not about age. I said, it said, this is where you need to do the work because you said it. You know who you are when you have that new fire. And so for me, it was like mirroring back something that, because when I kept saying, what's your vision? Where's your, she couldn't give me answers, but mm-hmm. Her saying, I need to find my new fire and me using that word now on and on with her, it, she it embodies something for her. So that's the gap for her. It was, I know this feeling. And when I have this feeling, I'm my best self. And if I can recapture that, so that's what yeah. hooked it. that's what hooked her into. Let me hear more what you can do to help me get this new fire back. I, I love, I love that you kind of caught that and you like, probably ask permission to reflect that back to her right yeah. and that's that's a sign of a fantastic coach which means you're freaking listening which is just, uh, yeah, yeah. You, I love that I love it so how about if you're maybe working with a group or even one-on-one is there any good question that you wish they would ask you but never do that the group would ask me either group or even just in a one-on-one like maybe you're just making sure again it's the right fit is there any good question that you wish they would ask you i i guess i because they they don't usually ask a lot of questions is you're right i would wish that they would ask me what my brilliance is as a coach yes yeah yeah and that's like and you know what also that that that's a fantastic answer you know in like, I, I want to be asked, are you coached? Like, I, I'm sure you have a coach, right? <laughs> I have my support squad, my, my, my success, success, success squad, as I call it. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. like, oh, cause, because I'm all about them finding their brilliance. I, so I don't know, Scott, you, we, so we, there's so many coaches out here. I've yeah. been certified by ICF. I've done the, 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 the thing. Um, and I have learned in my journey, and every coach is, is, doesn't have the same story, but in my story, it's like, I am a coach and I'm a lot of other things too, because right. I'm bringing all my brilliance into this space. I'm bringing all of me. I, I've had other careers. I've had a, others, I have other strengths. And so I share with my, even this client I just spoke to, I said, 
you're getting my strategy because that's one of my top gifts. And so I coach you and, and there's an and there. So as the brilliance unveiler, I am a coach and a strategist and a co-creator and, right? So in the spaces I create as a coach, mm. the coaching is one part of the whole picture. I love that, that it's not just that. And a lot of us coaches get sucked in, not sucked into, we get kind of categorized as consultants. And what I love again about you went back to about the, uh, the find the fire is a, like, I, I'm a big believer, Natalie, that we all know what we want. We just don't yeah. know how to talk ourselves into it, right? Yeah. And a great coach knows that that problem or issue or obstacle is within, but so is that answer. And like yeah. so many people, especially coaches, and, and I wish they would stop, to be honest with you, is that they try to consult it out of them, like tell them what to do. Like I did that early in my career and people come back and be like, Fergie, you're an idiot. Like that didn't work. But if they come up with it, Yes. Or help with the reflection, what you talked about, then they're more apt to take massive, as Tony would say, massive action on it, yeah. right? To do it. Because it's all about, at the end of the day, what we're helping our clients do is to tap into their own agency, authority, and autonomy. We can't be that for them, else they'll be dependent. And it's like, you don't, you're not, we don't try to raise dependent clients. We're trying to raise um, self, self empowered, um, clients who, who sure, know sure. that they have the wisdom inside of them and who can now understand the voice and learn to tap into that inner wisdom oh and we are, just, we are the guide so yes I mean I think part of what I try to say is like you already have all the things you need it's just about me helping you bring the things out that need to be aired out and brought to the front so that you can do the thing you're meant to do it's already all there and there right. are blocks and so part of what I'm going to do is help unveil those blocks so you can then start to navigate around those blocks or get rid of them completely but at the end of the day it's about the client's agency it's about the client's empowerment in, in themselves you i am the guy the champion the co-creator but i am not your boss i am not you know what i mean i'm not your guru either even you know I what? Am, yeah <laughs> what i do is i if i'm in person client i'll put them in my car or their actually their car and i sit with them and I'll say, you know, like, because I believe so many people have a foot in the past, a foot in the future, and they piss all over the present, right? They're, mm -hmm. they're there. When you get in their car and say, this rear view mirror right here is small for a reason. That's your past. You can learn from it and, 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 and pull some good memories from there, but don't live there. This yeah. windshield is your future. It's big. It's scary, right? Yeah. But, and I point at their console and see this GPS right here. That's me. I'm going to help you, but I guess what? I'm not going to buckle your seatbelt. I'm not going to hit the ignition, put it in gear. I'm your GPS. And that's exactly what you're saying. And, and I, I love I, it. Yeah. And I want to kind of move this forward just a little bit, uh, a, a kind of a chapter in your book or part in your book about getting clarity in your calling. Mm. Can you can you unpack that? Not not too much time, because I want people to go read the book, which squad I'm, I'm doing a book giveaway at the end. So it's stick around. But like, can you unpack a little bit of the clarity in your calling? Yeah, so that is one of the first things that actually developed um, one of my first lead magnets was this book I call The Clarity in Your Calling because I realized because of the work I had done on myself and on my journey and the, but what clients were coming with that there are three key pillars that people, it, it, they're very obvious. You're going to know what they are when I say them, uh, Scott, but a lot of people don't actually do the work to understand what those mean for them. So the first pillar is the passions. Where are my passions? Where is my hobby? What lights me up? You'd be surprised, Scott, how many people cannot answer that question. So that's number one. Number two <laughs> is what, what are my strengths? What am I actually good at? What are my superpowers that I'm bringing to the table? Again, you'd be surprised how many women go, I don't have any strengths or I don't know what I'm good at. And it's like, wow. Right. There's, there's a whole thing unpacking there. And then the third pillar, which is one that is very as coaches we all know about, but I don't know, I, I, I engage it a lot in my work because it's, I feel it's so foundational. It's the values. Where mm. are your values? Your values are what guides you. They're your fulcrum. They're what you don't even realize you're using to make your decision and your choices. So if you're not clear on what they are, you don't know where your choices are coming from. So when the, the intersection of those three pillars is what I see as when you unpack it and all those take their own, their own work. And that's why there's a chapter on, on it. All those three pillars, when you unpack all those, the intersection of that is to me the key to your calling. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Because it's, it's, it's so many times when I start doing the work of what you're good at, and when clients see something that they 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 didn't even know is a strength that they do so easily, and they're like, and I'm like, 
Do you realize this is a strength? You're just literally lying latent here, waiting for oh, you to pick it up. I love that. It, oh my it, God. And with those three, you know, the three pillars that you mentioned with, with the passion, the strengths and the values that, you know, they can step into them, their full self with that oh, and live authentically. Yes. It, yes. Yeah, that is, that is the whole heart. Yeah. My number one value, which is interesting is actually authenticity. So mm -hmm. when you say those words, step into it authentically, it means yeah. so much to me, Scott, because at the end of the day, and I say this all the time, we are each uniquely designed and wired to be a specific impact onto our sphere, the world, our domain. Yes. So it's about our individuality. That's our exceptionality, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can unpack your specific secret sauce, your specific passion, your specific journey, your specific um, expertise and put it all together, that's when you're like, you're doing your thing. The wow. thing you meant, you, the thing you're designed, created to do, to make your yes. impact. I believe you, that's a whole lot of it. You said that individuality impact with what? You, you individuality said is your exceptionality. Oh, I love it. That That's solid. I just made that up. I never said it before like that. So that's just. That's <laughs> good. I pull it out of you. It's I'll take the, I'll, I'll take the, the uh, credit, credit on that. So tell me a little bit about a failure that has really helped you mm -hmm. in your life, how you kind of uh, found that clarity in crisis. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in uh, really push through that the, the one maybe you've learned the most from yeah it's funny I would have to say it's it's the it's the quote-unquote failure of my first business my uh, image consulting business Ilana Image Management which was a huge huge thing for me uh, to the point where for the longest time I couldn't even I didn't even look at it I didn't even I, it's almost like it didn't happen at all I actually blocked it out of I've my had that before. I was so ashamed of the failure of it that's why I put mm -hmm. it in what's a failure but Scott, you'd be, you'd be surprised to learn that it's only recently in the past couple of years and more recently, even last year, where I've fully in, in, in embodied what it meant to, to look back at what I had built. Not just, I had a best-selling book back then too, another book, my first mm -hmm. book, Computer Fabulous. Um, but the, this was the book. It was all the women I'd helped. It was all the reviews I'd gotten and testimonials, all the talks I'd given, all the, all the videos I'd done. I mean, there was so much content and and transformation i'm thinking i thought to myself natalie part the lesson i learned from that and i, I shared a little bit about it in the in the in, in my new book mm -hmm. is that i never stopped long enough scott along the way to pause and say look what i'm building and creating as i go i was just going from thing to thing to thing to thing i'm a high achiever by by dna or whatever by 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 a nurture and so mm -hmm. i was just building creating building creating not taking stock of you're changing lives natalie the thing you wanted to do you're doing it you, may, you have a best-selling book on Amazon that you, tens of thousand copies have been sold. You, I was just like, okay, next thing, next thing, next thing. And then when it failed, it just felt like failure. I did not incorporate and integrate the wins and the, the oh. accomplishments and the seeds. Yes. Planted. So that, that my biggest lesson from, from failure has to be that because now I make a point. I actually did a whole series called the Saver Series about savoring, savoring our 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 paths, our time, but our what, what we are building, what we've created, what we've achieved, what Love we've that. done, and, and okay. honoring and acknowledging what the legacy that we're leaving behind before yes. we have to leave behind. Love it. I love it. And that that's just beautiful. Thank you for going deep on that for me. I really appreciate that, Natalie. And so have you seen the movie Back to the Future? Oh God, T too many years ago. Right, right. We're so yeah, so right almost well. 40 yeah. years ago, right? And yes. So let's get that DeLorean with Marty McFly. Let, let's go back to the, the double deuce, the 22 year old Natalie. Okay. I don't want you to change anything because there's all lessons and yeah. in, in whatnot, but maybe something you might tell her or maybe anybody else that's out there that's a little bit younger or maybe someone that's stuck. What would you tell them to maybe help them shorten their learning curve, blast through or level up? Maybe just to get through a little yeah. bit quicker. Yeah. Well, part of the reason I wrote this book is was from my younger self, actually, um, because okay. They have a lot of wisdom that she didn't have back then. But one of the things I would definitely say is a couple of things. One I would say is to own your brilliance. And, and what that means is be really aware of what you love to do and what you do well. And don't let anybody talk you out of what you know is your, are your gifts. 
Right. Because I think I know in my journey, there are gifts I had that I dismissed and denied because nobody was acknowledging them. And I didn't get to, didn't get to be used and leveraged until much later in my life. And that's that told held me back. And so that's the that's the I was like, you have everything in you. My 22 year old yell so about say, girl, you are smart. Own it. it. You you are creative. Own that. You are an uh, innovator. You know, all these things. I would say those things to her. And I'd also say, trust your intuition. Because that's something that I've only now learned to, to leverage and like, yeah. whoa, there's so much there. Yes. yes, I love that. And thank you for being transparent. That. And there's so many people that needed to hear that, like right now and, and today. And Natalie, how do you want your dash remembered? That little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date, your life date and your death date. Hopefully it's way down the road. But that tombstone, how do people want, how do you want people to remember now? she made she made her impact she changed my, she changed lives that to me would be everything that's why i do what i do um without her i wouldn't whatever like it, changing lives transforming minds you know anything along those lines would be like i've done my work all right I'm so gonna, then what would your definition of a life well live be live according to my values mm, love that. um and that people, you know what Maya Angelou said, that people just being in my in my orbit, being in my sphere, being in my my circle, that it made a positive difference to you, to that person, that it elevated them, it uplifted them, it empowered them, whatever those words might be. I that it. I love it. In their, in their, again, in their I, atmosphere was a positive contributing factor to their life. I honestly believe that you really care for other people's success more than than you care that they care about yours i i really love that about you natalie mm -hmm. and i'm so so blessed and squad we're going to take my good friend natalie jobity through our leveling up lightning round just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates time to shine today podcast varsity squad we are back and natalie like i said i'm going to be speaking up in dc a few times this year we're definitely going to connect in one of the suburbs for a nice uh, dinner and whatnot. Maybe we'll talk some about some of these questions in person if they're longer. But today, yeah. you've got five seconds to answer them with no explanations, and they can all be done that way. Now. Okay. okay. You ready? Okay. All right, let's level up. Nellie, what is the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Do you? Be you. Love it. Love it. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Gratitude journal every night. Thank five you. things, five different things. Yep. Beautiful. So if you see me maybe walking around in an event or we're just out somewhere and I look like I'm in my doldrums a little bit, other than your book, what book might you hand me? What book has influenced you to really level up? Oh God. So I'm a, book, a reader, so many books, but <laughs> I, ha I would have to say, oh God, okay. Woo, so many books. I, I'm a Brene Brown lover. So I would oh. say rising strong. I love, love it. Brene. Yeah. Love it. What's your most commonly used emoji when you text? The one like this, the, the, with the hands like <laughs> I love it. Every time I ask that, everyone's like, this or this or I love it. I love it. Nicknames growing up? Hanning's Tall 12. Say that again. Okay. So we had a drink, a soda called in Trinidad called Canning's Tall 12. Okay. Because I'm tall. That was a nickname growing up. I love it. It's very it. tall and slim. So that was like, yeah, Canning's Tall 12. Love it. And, okay. Quickly, what is your a hidden talent or superpower that you have that nobody knows about? Ooh. Um, oh, gosh. Um, I, I, okay, I'm really good at um, Wordle. Got it. I Beautiful. kill Wordle every day. Love it. Love it. Chess checkers or Monopoly? Monopoly. Awesome. Headline for your life. Ooh. Trailblazing, unstoppable, fearless, femme. Love that. Love the femme at the end. Beautiful. Go to ice cream flavor. Butter pecan. Awesome. So there's the, uh, the there's a sandwich called the Candy's Tall 12. Build that sandwich for me. Sandwich? Yeah. Huh? Oh my God. Oh my God. I, I'm not a sandwich girl, but okay. I'll put, I'll put, I'll put avocado. Oh, there we go. It's garlic. Mm. Uh, some pepperoni, some Ooh. some cheddar cheese in there. I think that's it. Beautiful. I love that pepperoni on there too. Awesome. So Natalie, any favorite charities or organization you like to give your time or money to? 
there's an organization, um, Christian Mentoring and Transition, that That's I'm awesome. a part of for women incarcerated, right locally, right in my tongue, actually. Yeah, that I you, you we, we, we pour into them with letters. That's because beautiful. of COVID, we haven't been visiting, but we, we're going to be visiting again soon. So just empowering these women who are kind of like, you know, been through some hard times. That's awesome. And I do that kind of in a jail of the Palm Beach. I live in Palm Beach, Florida, and I'm able to allow me because of my certifications and what I did to be able to go in and talk to the prisoners yeah, and to be able to like help them set their vision, especially the short timers to get them leveled yeah. up. And they go, and I do a pro bono. And it's so rewarding on Sunday mornings after church. Wow. It's, it's just fantastic. So, all right, last question. We can elaborate on this one, but what's the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? I'm going to be giving away my age a little bit here, but I'm going to have to say the seventies. Really? I yes. thought you were going to say the eighties, but I'll, I'll take, I'll take it there too. But I, but I, you know what? Some of my faves are from the seventies, man. Like, oh my God, um, heat wave and oh my God. <laughs> it's, also, sad, it's sad we lost Tina Turner yesterday, right? I, I just, I just found out today that we lost Tina Turner, yeah. but she was a legend. Yeah. She I got to meet her. For like five minutes. Oh. And I still comes back to this day and I still, those legs of hers just run through my oh mind. My like my and God. how nice she was to me. She was so nice. And I have like a little, I was in the military in the time out in San Diego and she came out for the troops. Oh. And uh, and like, I have a, like a, not a Polaroid, but like a picture you had printed, not, you know, there's no cell yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just amazing. So, but Natalie, how can we find you, my friend? So um, everything's on my website, theunveiledway.com. Like, um, but of course you can connect with me on LinkedIn and, and Instagram is where I spend my time. I'm not a Facebooker, um, mm -hmm. but my website pretty much has all that I'm up to and what I'm doing. So theunveiledway.com is the best way. Yeah. I love that. And that'll all be in the show notes out there, squad. And also I'm going to do um, a book of this. Uh, her book will be in the show notes, both the Kindle and the, um, the, the paperback version will be in here. I'm going to do a book giveaway to the first person that puts anywhere in our social or even text us at 561-440-3830, the words tall 12. Anybody that puts tall 12 in there is going to get her book. I um, mean, she must have stole it from me. I'm just totally kidding, but it's your time to shine, girl. And I, I've read through it, uh, the, the first couple chapters myself. And I absolutely, that's where I kind of got the question about the clarity. Uh, but if you're a female, and, and like I said, a few good uh, men out there, I'm going to get it for my Susan. Um, and she, I know she's going to love it. And I just, uh, it, it's a book that you need to be picking up. It came out in October of 22. But if you could give us in a synopsis, not too much time, because I don't want to spoil it for people. Mm -hmm. But if you could uh, give us a synopsis of your book. Yeah, so it's your time to shine, girl. I know I, I I don't know why I picked that title, but that's the one I picked. That's how we connected. Look. Yes, <laughs> I know. It's your time to shine. I mean, I just I'm brilliant. Everything but light. Um, but basically the book is an empowerment book, leadership book for women and a few good men. And there's it's 12 chapters, but in three sections. The first, the first mm -hmm. section is called No. It's that section is about knowing who you are, your brilliance, your obstacles, what your imposter, how it's revealing you, so that you can get really strong in that foundation and get the clarity for your calling, all that. The second section is about no, no, sorry, no show. So show is about you start to show um yourself you mm. more you, when you get more confidence, you're more no and show. Yes, right? no yeah. show. Uh, and then the last section is called glow. It's about how to sustain. So the shine you, you discovered and know how to sustain that glow. So it never dies out again. So oh, no wow. show glow. And it's all about your inside light shining outwardly so that you can be the best version of yourself and do the thing you're meant to do. That's the heart of the book. It, there are a lot of my stories in there, my own personal stories and my journey with all those things um, and stories of some of my clients a lot of references to other books that I've read. So it's a really all around good, solid love book. I love it. And it's quite, again, the first person puts, actually, I'm going to buy five books. The first person that puts, or the first five people put tall 12, <clears throat> again, any of our social, uh, please. Or if you even just reach out to Natalie um, and say, hey, I heard from you from Scott Ferguson. Natalie, let us know. And I'll make sure you get that book for free wow. um, on my dime. And Natalie, if you could do me one last solid, Leave us with one last knowledge nugget we can take with us, internalize, and take action. So we were talking earlier about leveling up, and um, that's actually the, the the theme I had in my newsletter that went out this morning. And I talked about, are you ready to level up? And I said, level up can look like a lot of different things, and it depends on who you are, what's stopping you, where you want to go, 
and and how you're naturally naturally um what what's your aspirations and so just be, leveling up is a broad I guess I'm saying it's a broad term and you could take that word as specific as you need to but there's we all are in a season where we can be leveled up and so the the nugget would be that be be clear for yourself what that looks like for you. And I gave a whole list of examples. Does it mean that you show up looking a different way or you start to lead a different way or you start to knock out that imposter voice in you? Or, you know, it, 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 there's so many scenarios, right. but you get clear on what leveling up means to you. And you take those first intentional steps to mm -hmm. get to that next level version of you because we all have levels of ourselves, yeah. many yeah. levels. And so you want to be intentional about taking those steps to get into that next level version of you, wherever you are starting from. I love it. And it's, it, you know, level up. I, I use that. It, it was a joke back in the day that, you know, because I used to in the military, everyone was in the Nintendo and Sega. This is 1990. Right. And they I'd be like, I'm going to Jimmy one way. No, we're going to sit here and level up on our your games. And I just are oh. you losers level up. But one thing I realized is just like Nike's just do it. Let, let's level up is a very neutral statement because you can either do it or not, or you can level up or not. So my mm -hmm. whole coaching is based around neutrality because, mm -hmm. you know, like positive people, like it, people say, well, like I had a bad round of golf the other day and like, how did it go? Mr. Positive. I'm like, didn't go that great, man. But like, aha, positivity is not working. I will tell you what positivity doesn't always work. Right. But yeah. what does work hundred percent of the time is negativity. So I'd like to stay very neutral. And that's where I take my clients for that neutral place, like in that car, mm -hmm. right? And then work them forward. So, you know, it's just, I love that you and I are, are just so aligned. And squad, I had the most fun conversation with my good friend, Natalie here. And I have pages of time, pages of notes. And I hope that you really do too. You know, she's a six foot tall ball of love and energy. You know, she loves connecting stories and helping their, her clients connect theirs. She wants to empower women and a few good men to blast through their lack of confidence and not just on the external, but the internal as well. They want, she wants you to step into your power and influence and design your brilliance. She, she will provide a really, really authentic, safe place uh, for you to really start your level up process because she's a very super curious coach. She listens not only with her ears, but she listens with all her senses. You know, and if you're working with a coach or starting to work with a coach, ask them straight up, what is your brilliance? Well, how is that? Are you coached? Are, how are you going to get me? How are you going to be that GPS to get me wh where they are? You know, she wants to you to develop your gifts and give them away to other people that might need that help as well. She has what I'm calling the AAA, where you tap into your agency, authority, and autonomy. Become self-empowered. She has her pillars that really fire you up. There's... I'm sorry, your passions that, you know, the pillars of passion, strength, <laughs> values, you know, get, find that fulcrum and, and she'll help you guide there and get you to where you know that you need to be. You know, we're all unique and we all impact people in different ways. Indiv individually, individuality is your exceptionality. And that's where she wants to really push you to that next level. And Big thing here, squad, and I know that I have trouble with this as well because I'm always looking for the next person to serve, but really pause and celebrate what you've built. Savor your wins, as Nally would say. And while you're at it, you know, own your brilliance. Be aware of what you love to do and do well. Don't listen to the naysayers, man, okay? And if you don't know how to, like my good friend Leah Woodford would say, get your asking, Gary. There's people out there that will answer it for you. You know, want you to trust your intuition. She will be remembered as someone that made her impact, bumped and bruised, mind you, because she has went through some crazy stuff and the failures that she shared with us, but she's going to slide across home plate knowing that she's leveled up people. I really believe she's planting trees she's never going to sit in the shade of. You know, she wants you to live your life according to your values and make people around you better. That is what Natalie does. And how about no show and glow? You know, remember who you are. Find out what's stopping you from where you want to go. And remember, inch by inch, it's a cinch. By the yard, it's hard. Do things in little increments and you'll get there. And that's what my good friend Natalie will help you do. That's what she does. She levels up her health. She levels up her wealth. She's humble. Yes, you know, she's hungry. She's absolutely gorgeous. She's brilliant. And always in her life, I absolutely love your guts, Natalie. I cannot wait to collaborate with you. Thank you so much. That was an awesome summary. I'm like, he's good. Oh, thank you so much. We'll talk soon, okay? Yes, awesome. Bye now. Bye-bye.